Uh, number one Karl Lagerfeld fan in all of North America. <laughs> he loves all the dresses and spends all of his free time at the costume museum and at the Metropolitan Museum looking at them. Um, he is the author of Welfare from Tyrant Books, and he can be found on Instagram and Twitter at One Love Asshole. Please join me in welcoming Steve Anlow. Around a child-sized t-shirt around my face like I've seen them do on television tragic situations. A building collapses and everyone in it crushed, bleeding, screaming in the ruins for aid. Those lucky enough to escape into the streets before it all went to shit, they're bombarded with waves of dust, coughing. Sirens wail like terrible lighthouses beckoning in the darkness. But I'm only at work. I knot the sleeves at the back of my head. The body hangs over my face like a bandit. Emblazoned on the front is a picture of a dead man, commemorative. His smiling face before the cancer ate him, or the bus hit him, or he fell asleep and never woke up. I didn't ask. All I think about are my lungs, and doing what it takes to not end up like a face on the shirt, at least for another day. So I hold my breath, half wondering how much of this shit it'll take to kill me. As I look up at the tangle of wires coming out of a power bar nailed to the basement ceiling, one cord leads to a pressure washer. If I follow another, it runs into the room. I'm leaning in the doorway of now, next to a machine blasting a screen with UV light. Exposes the black images taped to them. I've screen printed here, or somewhere else, all of my life. It's always kept me fed, and that's all there is to say. The final cable in this mess drops from the power bar onto the ground. My eyes follow it through a floor made of old shipping pallets. I watch for rodents running between the slats. Greasy bastards. The boss says he sealed up the holes, eradicated the beasts. But this building is older than our nation's charter of rights and freedoms, and rats are better at problem solving than most of us could ever hope to be. The extension cord snakes its way to where the boiler used to sit. It's gone now, replaced by a youthful Ukrainian refugee hunched under a single ball, bare. In his soft child's hands, he holds a disc grinder that produces a mist of aluminum dust clogging both of our lungs, burning our eyes. At least I have my t-shirt for protection. And I remember a few weeks back, the boss said a Russian came in offering refugees from the war looking for work. Suspect, but I never speak up. In his head, the boss imagined an old woman with a handkerchief tied in her hair and decades of experience behind an embroidery machine. Send them my way, he told the oaf. What we got was a 15-year-old kid, who I expected to look more like me when he came in the door. Tall, blonde, blue eyes, but he couldn't be any more different. If someone told me he had been scooped up by an enormous golden eagle at the peak, like, the peak of the Andes, slept in the nape of its neck as the magnificent bird crossed the continents with a single flap of its wings, I wouldn't bat an eyelash. Through the cloud of dust, I watch him work. He stands at a small table meant to hold drinks in the sunny backyard while hot dogs sizzle on the grill. An aluminum frame for printing is clamped down to keep it from kicking back when the kid starts grinding, running the rough circular pad back and forth along the edges. It's easy to tell he's not used to the work, the sweat on his face, the tension in his shoulders. Up until now, he's had it easy. He clamps, on a new, he clamps a new screen in. The rough pad touches down like a kiss. It screeches and I clench my jaw. Off comes a layer of toxic glue and plastic mesh. Both are obliterated with ease. Then he's into the metal. The whirring tool sends the, sends the awful dust into the air. I'm three meters away, shirt tied tight to my face. My lungs burn like a campfire on a cold Quebec night. I live in Montreal. <clears throat> and this kid, like he's got, and this kid, he's got a snout in there like a dog eating dinner. He's bent over, no protection for his eyes or mouth. Reminds me of being young myself, brain dead, needing to work to eat and enthralled to anyone willing to offer me any of either. An older man telling me what to do, sure, why not? It doesn't matter how badly your gut is turning or the voice of reason in your, is yelping in your ear, respect your elders. Besides, he's not familiar with our customs, so he's easy to take advantage of. And the boss will. It's why he hired him. He smiled when he told me the kid's got a mother and three sisters at home to feed, that his father was trapped on the other side of the world while bombs rained down all around them. My mind raced to books about World War II, 
bunkers, Berlin and ruins, those who survived covered in black silk, begging their conquerors for scraps of food like hungry dogs. Someone has to pay for Papa to escape the horror. Though we look nothing alike, seeing him is seeing me. I've been in this shop for years now. I knew it was a dump when I walked through the door. Plenty of better ones in the city that'd be happy to have me, pay me well to be there. The kid has valid reasons for coming in. What am I? I'm not running from missiles or an invading force or trying to save my father from anything. As far as I know, he's safe and sound where I left him 30 years ago. Back in a tranquil village on the shores of Lake Erie, in a house people would call big if they saw it. A stone's throw from one of the largest freshwater sources in the world, beaches, pe beaches people travel to visit. My father's new wife was born and raised there, too scared to leave. He saw an opportunity in that despicable woman in the paradise she was from. He, he took it no matter what the cost. Now here I am, a long way off, and I no longer think like I was raised to. It comes with running. Il faut dire au revoir à tout. Sorry about my friends, it's terrible. The things you believe in, the people who put, and I'm super nervous too. The things you believe in, the people who put them there. I was raised to think it would be easy. A cushy job like my father in a big factory filled with machines and beasts of burden was waiting. But the jobs dried up before I could snag one. The model was failing. And people, my, people like me were going down with the ship while those who filled my head with empty dreams had it all. I gave up on their way of life. Gave myself over to art. And now that's my war. My father, stuck behind, my father stuck behind enemy lines. My mother and sister waiting at home for the money I bring, bring home, even though, I, I haven't, even though mine haven't spoken to me in years. I give, my life for the left. I give my life for the time this job affords. For me, it's not about the place I'm in. I can make the best of the worst situation. It's the things that allows me to do in my free time and how much of it I have. The exposure unit beeps. The sound of air escaping from the suction lid as I release the clamps is a comfort. I peel off the transparencies and toss them on the floor, place the screen in the sink and gently spray it with water. The design lights up. A picture of Elvis Presley famously shaking his hips, his face replaced by that of Christ, the phrase, King of Swing along the bottom. When I groan, I do it for everyone. I cough, aluminum in my throat. And as I wonder about bleeding lungs, slow deaths, I tell myself this is what I wanted. This is the life that I carved from the stone I was given. Sure, all my friends went to school. Good jobs with desks and titles that children can brag about. Homes and cars and swimming pools. Savings accounts for a future unknown. I saw it all in my father's face when I was young. He never said the words, but his eyes couldn't lie. His life was a prison. Standing in a cloud of metal beneath the shirt I used in place of a respirator, I smile. Because when I leave at the end of my shift, I don't have to come back for four days every week a long weekend. My old man would be proud. I turn to my right when the grinding stops. The Ukrainian kid is face down on the floor. He doesn't move when I kick him. Thanks a lot. <laughs>